But I have a question for you as a consumer and viewer of both high definition TV shows and high definition internet podcasts. Because yes. I know you're big on shooting internet shows in high def. And I've got my Apple TV now. So mm. I've watched some pure web shows on my Apple TV, like Wine Library TV and Internet Superstar and Techzilla. How come they just don't look the same as when I watch Grey's Anatomy in high def? Is it just, I mean, is it because Patrick Dempsey is on Grey's Anatomy? Why is it, I mean, when I watch a real broadcast show in high def, I'm sorry, it just looks better okay, than wait, wait, web shows I, that are shot in high def. I, I, wanna, I need to know. I wanna, go ahead, go ahead, John. I was just going to say, well, as my fiance would say, having Dr. McDreamy on the show certainly helps. <laughs> uh, so she, she loves Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> let's, let's put it in perspective. The cost, the cost per finished minute for most of the podcasts that you're seeing is between a hundred and three hundred dollars a finish minute. The cost of the production value of a of ER is about two hundred thousand dollars a finish minute, and what that means is an enormous amount of lighting. It means sometimes shooting on film. It means you know huge crews and and all of that, especially the lighting, uh, makes a huge and difference. Lighting. lighting, lighting was going to be one. Yeah, lighting, well, lighting, because, and more lighting because these well, web shows they don't feel like they're shot in high def well, and that might be because i'm comparing it to traditional tv and maybe if they weren't shot in high def they'd look a lot worse and look i'm not saying they look bad i mm-hmm. i still think most of the web shows look good and i like watching them on my apple tv but right. it, they don't pop like when you watch a giants right. game in high well, def well, or something Daisy, yeah i know they have more money so daisy right. let me just tell you this is this is like the aha moment when i've been teaching people mm-hmm. the director of photography the person that's in charge of the camera department on a real f- project like ER, whatever, doesn't actually touch the camera or look at it or do anything with it. They're just there for lighting, right? Then they have a camera operator to film. On a lower budget, the guy who's in charge of the camera department is doing the sound, the camera, the lighting and everything and just operating and pressing the buttons. But there's a guy who's incredibly experienced who just makes it look good and they're only worried about the lights. And of course, they know the camera inside out so they know what it's going to look like on film, but they're not sitting there with their eye up against the viewfinder most of the time. And the reality is... why do we think it's so important to do web shows in high def then? Well, I... I think that I think that for us, I know that when when we're looking at doing it, I mean, I I don't claim that we're shooting stuff that is as good as watching, you know, TV. But what we're looking at is how do we a build the muscle because we know that that's what's coming with Apple TV with everything else. Mm-hmm. We know that nine sixty by five forty is probably a safe bet on online uh, very soon as far as what we want to see um, at a fairly high quality. The other thing is if you're doing any kind of training, we do a lot of tech uh, podcasts. It's very hard to see, read the screen if you don't have something that's um, that that is smaller than. There's a lot of things that I don't think we need, like the NAB stuff that we have. I don't know how much we really need to put that at you know HD, other than that's what we do. Mm-hmm. Um, but but being able to resolve things um, becomes uh, becomes more important, and uh, and and it, and it does look it does look nicer than standard def when you're looking at some of the stuff blown up on a big screen. The um, but I do think that you know there's a long way to go. But but the thing to remember when we when we talk about podcasting, we talk about the quality of the of the shows, is to think about what MTV looked like in the early '80s, to think about what. Uh, okay. Discovery Channel and History Channel look like in the early 90s. You know, we're, 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 what we're looking at is the beginning of, uh, you know, there's no budgets. You know, Discovery Channel shows used to be 750, or I mean, sorry, used to be like $50,000 budgets. You know, 50000 or $70,000 budgets or $25,000 budgets for Discovery Channel stuff, and they were just kind of hacking stuff together when they got started. But now, you know, Discovery Channel shows are half a million, million, two million, five million, you know, $40 million uh, for some of these... Uh, Discovery slash BBC um, connections that changes the entire value, but it took a long time for them to get there. Now, what as podcasters we don't get there by continuing to shoot standard def. We get there by practicing on and and literally dealing with more resolution so that we can figure out a way to fill up those pixels so that they do look like broadcast. Yeah, and that's I, a good point. I like that. And interestingly, so I, I just want to briefly touch on one of the uh, issues that. Uh, <laughs> That, that I'm dealing with personally, which is, um, as you know, I did this thing called Jake Forgotten, and it's a 12-episode web series. I put the first two episodes up, and the reaction to them, you know, thousands of downloads, the reaction to them was comments like, have the filmmakers ever seen a movie or television show before? It doesn't look like it by what I'm seeing here. And now what's interesting about that is, that's a HD, you know, 720p content on iTunes, and you know, almost three thousand dollars per finished minute of footage. You know, three HD cameras, a crew. You know, two one-ton trucks. I mean, we put a heck of a lot of energy and time and resources into this. But when you come out and you say something like, "I am competing with 
Grey's Anatomy, or I'm competing with television, the expectation that you're setting is exactly the expectation that you have, Daisy, which is, you know, I have to meet a bar that has been set by, you know, uh, I, I'll give you a really quick, great example. If you go to um, my website and uh, if you go to CaseFilms.com and you look at if you look at my blog and you look at a, uh, something called Heroes, I was sitting across the street at my house in L.A. filming Heroes episode ten. They were filming it across the street at the house across the street, and I have about six minutes of footage, and there are no less than 150 people there, and no less than I don't know. Ten million dollars in lights. I mean, it's just it's completely ridiculous. And, you know, you look at that and then you say, okay, that's what I have to compete with if I'm saying I'm competing with television. But then, uh, you know, if I if I turned around and said, okay, well, not I'm not competing with television. I'm competing with web shows. Right. The irony is on Rever, I said, I'm not competing with television. I said, I'm competing with other web shows. And the comments on Rever are like, holy crap, this is unbelievable compared to all other web shows. I can't even get over it, you know? Right. So you get, it's all about setting expectations, right? And $3,000 per finished minute for a web series is, I mean, that's knocking the ball out of the park, right? And that's a lot. Absolutely. But for a television show, that doesn't even scratch the surface. And so I, I... I, anyway, I just wanted to give you a practical example that I'm first. I, I'm personally feeling the pain on there. Yeah, it and, relates exactly to what you're saying. Is, yeah, and I think the other thing is that there are good. I mean, look, I'll leave FX Guide TV out because that's mine, right? But I'm going to give you one. Art's sake, that Laurie does from Pixel. Yeah. Art's mm-hmm. sake looks like that's just quality. I mean, I would watch that on Apple TV and just not for a second be thinking web TV. And that's right. just. Right. Now, they take six hours to shoot it, and, and I don't know them personally, but you probably do, Alex. But Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And Laurie just does magnificent work, and that is a great, great web-based program. Yeah. It's on, uh, I think, on networks, but anyway, it's yeah, just yeah, really One good. of the on-network shows. And uh, and, and it's, it's, it's definitely one of those things that um, I think we're going to continue to see that quality. I mean, that's why we keep on pushing, you know, pushing the envelope and trying to find better ways to, to do stuff, you know, cheaper. You know, and and I think that uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a really interesting uh, you know couple of years as because what's what we're seeing now is money is starting to flow into online video. I mean, we're feeling it, <laughs> and uh, absolutely, and and so the money is starting to flow in, and the and what we can do, the kind of quality that we can um, now produce shows at um, in two thousand eight is going to be two or three times the quality that what we that we what we could do last year. And let's and remember, you, of course, too, that, that TV networks, that, I mean, broadcasters are trying to figure out a less expensive model. I mean, that's what Jeff right. Zucker talked about at Nappy, saying, you know, that the pilot system is, is broken. I mean, so we're going to be seeing the broadcast networks search for less expensive ways to produce their well, shows and, as and well. We, so. I was, I'm going down for a meeting uh, next week to talk to a, a TV network or a TV, um, you know, someone working on a TV show. Uh, and they're what they're looking for, people who can do high end web stuff that with a little bit more money could maybe pump out something that's a little bit higher quality that is kind of low end TV, you know, I mean, or inexpensive TV. Right. And, and so the thing is, is that crossover production wise is right around the corner for a lot of us. And, and I think that the TV is going to meet us in the middle. I think that we're going to get more money for internet and you're going to get less money for a lot of TV and people who can figure out a way to do that leanly, uh, I think are going to be in a good position. Yeah, and and ironically, that's that's already been my experience and the experience of people around me. Like I, I mentioned, Pink the series, Pink the series is a great example of uh, really, really, really good show. You know, four million views, and then they they got a six million dollar deal to do twenty four more episodes, right? Right. So and I- you're starting to see exactly, Alex. You're starting to see people. You're starting to see networks look at shows like Pink the series or like you know the stuff we're doing and say, my God, if you know. Okay, so this, you know, maybe this doesn't look perfect, but look at right. the budget. What if we triple the budget? What if exactly. we quadruple the budget? Then, you know, then we're, now we're starting to approach the kind of Grey's Anatomy type look. Right. Without Dr. McTreamy. 